Hello, my name is Stiley Hayward. I would like to welcome you to the Blessed Hope Ministry. We are a King James grounded family Bible study. These lessons are not to be a substitute for regular church attendance. Nightly I direct my family through the Bible by chapter and verse. We request you to join us and to study from God and His Son Jesus Christ. You may have permission to like, send, or encourage our studies with family or friends. Edification of what God has and what He desires in our life. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You may use our studies, but I request that you do not abuse them. For YouTube videos, subscribe below for more videos. And place the thumbs up and leave a comment or email me. Thank you. Exodus 28. And take thou unto thee Aaron, thy brother, and his sons with him from among the children of Israel, that he may minister. Minister is to do something for God. There are men and women that have the title minister, and they don't do nothing for God. Unto me in the priest's office. So where do they get the title minister? It's right here. It's a priestly, a priestly office, but it's not a title. It's a verb. It's not a noun. And what the ministry of Aaron and his sons are going to be is the sacrifices, the candles, the bread, uh, judgments. We'll get later on to looking at leprosy, looking at people who have wounds. And you'll find those that have minister, most of them don't do nothing. Even Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, well, they haven't died yet. Eleazar, Ithamar, these will be going into the promised land. And Aaron's sons. And thou shalt make holy garments for Aaron thy brother, for glory and for beauty. Well, see, beauty. Here's something that pleases God. And this beauty of these garments is going to completely cover the skin. And thou shalt speak unto all that are wise-hearted, whom I have filled with the spirit of wisdom. As I learned today, there's the first time wise shows up. And it's a reference to the Holy Spirit. Wise, wisdom, is the ability to use what you know. Knowledge is what you know. Wisdom is how to apply what you know. You can learn how to drive a car. Wisdom is when you are driving down the road in the driver's seat. Whom the men I have filled with the spirit of wisdom. That they may make Aaron's garments to consecrate him. Give him to the service of God, that he may minister unto me in the priest's office. God has already chosen and given men the ability to do the work that needs to be done. Now, that's a free will we're going to learn about later, as they'll be named. God has given every man talents. Now, you can use them for yourself in the world, and you're not going to get nothing. You can use them for God and get blessed. And still use them for an occupation and make a living. And these are the garments which thou shalt make. A breastplate. An ephod. And a robe. And a broidered coat. Needlework. We've already talked about that last night. A mitre. And a girdle. How many men wear girdles out there? Thou shalt not wear what pertaineth to a woman. Well, there's a man wearing a girdle, the priest wearing a girdle. And they shall make holy garments, holy garments, holy ground, holy garments. There are many things in the Bible that's holy, but I've never read holy water. I've never seen holy baloney. I've never seen holy cow. But I've seen holy garments. For Aaron thy brother and his sons, 
that he may minister unto me in the priest's office. So these holy garments are not for the people. These are for the priests, for the Levites alone. They shall take gold, blue, heavenly, purple, royalty, scarlet, the blood of Jesus Christ, and fine linen, which is righteousness of the saints. Book of Revelation. And I shall make the ephod of gold. Now this is an old-fashioned t-shirt if you ever seen them. They got the straps that go you know, over to the shoulders. This ephod is a type of Gideon makes, a, makes an ephod. And they put it on a pole and it becomes a flag. And they salute it and stand up to sing national anthems to it. And when you don't stand up and worship it, you know, you get upset and people get angry at you. And it became a god amongst Israel. I didn't mean to say that. I'm sorry. But that's what it became. It's like an old t-shirt I remember my grandpa wearing. Gold, blue, and of purple. Now the gold would be, be hammered out into thread. A scarlet and fine twine, twine linen with cunning work. You do the best work expert work cunning today is a word that's been degraded see it's not evolution things get worse and worse and for the worse cunning means something good it speaks about david playing cunningly that means he gave it his best for saw he ain't going boing 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 that's not what it means it's shall have the two shoulder pieces again like i said it's an old-fashioned t-shirt that of or joined at the two edges thereof you know where the, the outline where the neck and the chest is and so it shall be joined together and a curious girdle made with care it's not ooh, what's that thing a definition of curious would be made with care. You just did haphazardly make it. It's not made in a sweatshop. It is made by men with wisdom, verse 3, and made for the purpose that this is God. It's for God. I'm going to give it my all. The ephod, which is upon it, shall be of the same, according to the work thereof, even of gold. Of blue and purple and scarlet and fine twine linen. These priests were decked out. The high priest and his sons. You were to look at them and say, that's the high priest. That is the children of Aaron. And that's what the Roman Catholic Church does there. That's a priest. That's a nun. And that's where Jesus said that, you know, they make long their robes so people say, hey, there's the rabbi. Stand out. Look at me. So people will call me by a title. The only ones that God ever said to do that would be the high priest and his sons. No one else was supposed to stand out. And I shall take two onyx black stones and grave on them the names of the children of Israel. There are 12 of them. Six of their names on one stone and the other six names of the rest on the other stone according to their birth and we're not told which tribes are grouped together and which ones go on the left or which one goes on the right with the work of an engraver in stone like the engravings of a signet shall thou engrave the two stones with the names of the children of Israel thou shalt make them to be set in ouches which is a setting of gold you know, what you put the stone in. That's what they call it. Ouch. And thou shalt put the two stones upon the shoulders of the ephod for stones of memorial unto the children of Israel. Now women have their garments. They have the pads that is, that is under the clothes. But for this priest, the high priest, he has on the ephod, he has an ouch, a setting with a stone that's black. And six names of Israel on one side and six names of Israel tribes on the other side. And Aaron shall bear their names before the Lord upon his two shoulders for a memorial. That high priest Aaron and his sons after that would carry those names on his shoulders. And if you're going to minister to God, 
with a congregation of a church, you better minister with those people that are before you in those pews upon your shoulders. In prayer and aid and taking care of and making sure they're getting all that they need to be getting. And only the names that are in your congregation. Aaron doesn't carry any other names of anybody else but his family. And thou shalt make ouches of gold. And two chains of pure gold at the ends. And wreathing work shalt thou make them. Wreath. You know what a wreath is. It's round. And make them and fasten the wreath and chains to the ouches. So the chains are round. So the invitation that you get of this is Christmas time when you hang it on the door and you know a holiday wreath. Now I shall make the breastplate. This is another item. Ephop, now the breastplate of judgment. Now imagine walking up to the high priest and say, Judge not, least ye be judged. That's, that's my clothing. That's my job. With cunning work again. Expertise work. After the work of the ethod, thou shalt make of gold, of blue, and of purple, and of scarlet, and of fine twine linen, shalt thou make it. Colorful. Four square. So it's square. It shall be it shall be yeah, shall be being doubled. A span shall thou shall be the length thereof, and a span shall be the breadth thereof. Just another measurement. They say eight inches here. And thou shalt set in it settings of stones, even four rows of stones. To, now, before we read on verse 17, let's go to Ezekiel 28:11. Ezekiel 28:11. Let's check out something that is very interesting about this high priest, because God sets things in order. Ezekiel 28:11, I believe I said. Let's try to get there. And when we're going to talk about Ezekiel 28, if you've studied your Bible, you know we're talking about Lucifer. And I said 28.11. In Ezekiel 28.11, we'll read this section so we know who we're talking about. Don't take my word for it. Take it for the Bible. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me saying. So this is God speaking. This is not a man writing. This is God, the Holy Spirit. God Almighty. Son of man, Ezekiel. Take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God, Thou sealest up the sun, sum full of wisdom. Did you see that where we were reading? People are full of wisdom. And perfect in... Did you see that word when we read it? Thou hast been in Eden. Did you ever read about the king of Tyrus being eaten? No, Let's see, there was Adam, there was Eve, there was God, and there was a serpent. And Revelation 12 says that serpent was the dragon, which is the old serpent, which is Satan. Oh, okay. Every precious stone was thy covering. The sardas, the topaz, the diamond, the barrel, the onyx, the jasper, sapphire, the emerald, go to Emerald City, the carbuncle and gold, and the workmanship of thy tablets and of thy pipes, musical instruments, was prepared in thee in the day that thou was created. So it's not God. God was never created. Adam and Eve did not have trumpets and trombones hanging out of their body. It had to have been that serpent. Satan. Thou art the anointed cherub. Okay, we can just stop right there. And we know now that's Lucifer, the fallen one. He has fallen Isaiah 14. And what does God do in chapter 28 of Exodus when he sets up his high priest? He puts somebody who is likened 
on to that cherubim that's missing in beauty and and stones of beauty and colorful and made with wisdom. That when Satan sees that high priest, he's jealous. That's what I look like. And he don't look like that today. Satan's a fallen creature. He's as light. So when, when they're worshiping Sodomite, the rainbow, what do you think would happen when light went through Lucifer? What do you think was projected? Colorful rays. Wouldn't you think the spectrum? And I think, what is it, Revelation chapter 4, let's see, Revelation chapter 4, when John enters into heaven, Revelation chapter 4, let's check something out here. Oh. Revelation chapter 4, verse 4, round about the throne were four and twenty-four seats. And upon the seats I saw four and twenty-four elders sitting clothed with white raiment, and they had on their heads crowns of gold. And out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunders and voices. And there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which is the seven spirits of God. That's the candlestick in the holy place. Oh. Verse 3, excuse me. And he that sat was to look upon like jasper and sardine stone and there was a rainbow around about the throne in sight like an emerald the rainbow in heaven's green and when God told Noah I will set a bow in the sky he never put rainbow King James Bible so go ahead, let the Sodomites put the rainbow and the colorful thing. They're only showing the ways if you were to put light into Lucifer or the high priest. Now when we get to in verse 30, this breastplate that we're just about to get into is going to light up somehow. When David inquired of the Ephob and the Urim and the Thurim, that thing would give answers. And with the, the, the spelling of the Hebrew alphabet, I believe it does not, this breastplate would not contain all the Hebrew letters that you're found in Psalms 119, but it has enough that you can make a sentence. So we are seeing God's high priest of Israel, and he is made to look like Lucifer. And he matches in beauty. And he matches in wisdom. And now when we get to these stones. Verse 17. Thou shalt set in the settings of stone. Even four rows of stones. The first shall be Sardis. And Topaz. A carbuncle. And shall be the first row. The second row shall be an emerald. A sapphire. And a, what are these? What, what is the invitation that man has come up with? These? these are your birthstones. Man has come up with an invitation of the high priest and an imitation of Lucifer himself. And the second row shall be an emerald, a sapphire, and a diamond. The third row, a ligure, ligure, an agate, and an amethyst. And the fourth row, a beryl, and an onyx, and jasper. And shall be set in gold with their enclosing. And we're not told what tribe goes to what stone. And the stone shall be with the names of the children of Israel. Twelve. According to their names, like the engravings of a signet. Everyone with his name shall they be according to twelve tribes. Each one of those stones has the name of a tribe of Israel. But we're not told which. Oh, man does things that God says in the Bible, and they don't even know why they do it. And thou shalt make upon the breastplate chains at the ends of the wreathen work of pure gold. And thou shalt make upon the breastplate two rings of gold. Those rings have something to do with something. 
I don't know what they are. Because there are rings on the furniture to put the staves on. There are rings upon the breastplate. There are rings. And it's not for the fingers. Of all the fasteners God has chosen, he chooses rings. Thou shalt put the two wreathen chains of gold in the two rings which are on the edge of the breastplate. This breastplate hangs by chains. It's not carried in the hand. It doesn't fit completely over the shoulders except for by chain. It's not for a defense breastplate. It's for answers. The other two ends of the two wreathing chains shall thou fasten in the two ouches, that's a setting, and put them on the shoulder pieces of the ephod before where those other two stones are, with the names six and six. Sixty-six books of the Bible. And thou shalt make two rings of gold, and thou shalt put them upon the two ends of the breastplate, in the border thereof, which is in the side of ephod inward. And you can look on the internet for images, and you can find good pictures. And two other rings of gold thou shalt make, and shalt put them on the two sides of the ephod, underneath, toward the fore part thereof, over against the other coupling, put together, Something you, you get together, you'd be like a seatbelt. Those brackets, you know, when you put your child in the, in the grocery carriage, you put those two buckles together. That's a coupling. Above the courteous girdle of the ephah. Now shall bind the breastplate by the rings. Thereof unto the rings of the ephah with a lace of blue. So you tie this thing on. And it may be above the courteous girdle. The girdle goes around your stomach midsection of the ephod that the breastplate be not loose from the ephod is tight it's not flopping around when when they're walking and Aaron shall bear the names of the children of Israel in the breastplate of judgment upon his head heart excuse me I've marked my Bible so much I can't read upon his heart so he's got the children of Israel on his heart to minister preachers and he's got their names on his soldiers on his soldiers for burden carrying. On the shoulders and on the heart. And when it comes to the heart, it's individual. And when it's on the shoulder, he's got six on this side and six on that side. And he goeth into the holy place for memorial before the Lord continually. So when he goes in that holy place. He better be wearing this. Now, have you seen rope? I don't see no rope. I mean, we got the urim throne, we got a robe, we got the holy crown, but there's no rope here. And they will say, tradition says that they would tie a rope to him when he went into the most holy place. No, you won't. If you went in there with a rope, he ain't coming out. And thou shalt put the breastplate of judgment, the Urim and the Thurum. What is that? Absolutely no idea. It means, Urim and Thurum means lights and perfection. So when Paul tells us about Satan and Jesus tells us about Lucifer, Satan, it describes him as ministers of light. I beheld Satan as lightning fall. So when you're coming and you see the, the light at the end of the tunnel, you better turn around and get away from it. And light perfection, that would be Jesus Christ. And yet Satan is the great imitator. And how do you know that? He will come back as the Antichrist. He will be everything that Jesus is, but in an unholy sense. And they shall be upon Aaron's heart, and he goeth in before the Lord. And Aaron shall bear the judgment of the children of Israel upon his heart before the Lord continually. This Urim and Thurim, wherever it is, it goes inside the breastplate, and it lights up those stones when you want an answer. And as I said already, David inquires of the breastplate. Here it is. He wants to know, do I go here or do I go there? 
beep up, beep up, bop, bop, bop. A great imitation you would have for this is that game Simon says, and the lights are beeping around. A lot of your electronic games have little lights that beep and color and all that. That's an imitation of this breastplate. These horror stories of, of games and television programs of dragons and witchcraft and Bob gems, new age Bob stones. Thou shalt make the robe of the ephod all of blue. You know what Jesus had, didn't you? That they cast lots for? Here it is. A robe. And we're going to find out why they didn't rip it. We're going to find out why they cast lots for it. And there shall be a hole in the top of it. Now this would be your... Today would look like a poncho. But not as cheap as a poncho. In the midst there shall have a binding of woven work round the hole of it. So where the hole where you slide overhead, it, it's it's been sold, it's been seen, so it does not rip. So when it comes to the soldiers, we we can't rent this. All right, let's shoot dice, let's draw straws, let's see who gets the high card, let's see who gets this robe of Jesus. A hole, but as it were, a hole of a habergine. And that's a coat of, uh, it's, it's an armament coat with little rings. It's a coat of mail. That it be not rent. Now let's go to John 19.24 about this. The Gospel of John 19.24. You wouldn't think that something as like this would be found in a, in a gospel, would you? A robe? Come on, 19.24. Let's see what the Bible has to say. The Gospel of John 19.24 Scripture with Scripture. And they said amongst themselves, Let us not rend it, but cast lots for it, whose it shall be, that the scriptures might be filled which said, They parted my raiment among them, and for my vesture they cast lots. These things, therefore, the soldiers did. And when you run back to this boring chapter of Exodus 28, Oh, who cares about this clothes? You were just identified with a robe that Jesus won, a war. And if you were to match this robe, what we're talking about right now, it does not appear in the robe movie of Hollywood. That purple robe that Jesus had was not put on by Jesus. It was put on by the Roman government to mock the king of the Jews. As they put a, a thorn crown on his head and they kneeled and said, Oh, hell, the king of the Jews. They're mocking him in the purple. Jesus would probably have an ephod. He probably would have had a girdle. He had the robe. These were, these kind of clear items were what the men wore back then. Be careful when you say, oh, you know, a man shall not wear what pertains to a woman, and a woman shall not you know, wear what pertains to a man. You do know that the disciples, Jesus told them, after my die, when you go out, you carry your script, and the script was like a purse. You do know that, right? You do know that David tore the skirt of King Saul? You do know those things, don't I hope you do. I hope you wouldn't just go throw, find a Bible verse and, you know, misuse it. I don't think you do that. So verse 33. And beneath upon the hem of it, thou shalt make pomegranates of blue, that's the fruit, and of purple, and of scarlet, round about the hem thereof, and bells of gold between them around the mouth. You would hear the high priest walking. You wouldn't tie a, ro ro a rope around him. Yeah, he's still in there. I can hear him. So what would be the expression? He's got bells on. Comes out of the King James 1611 Bible. In verse 34, an interesting memory verse. 
a golden bell and a pomegranate, a golden bell and a pomegranate, upon the hem of the robe round about. I don't think that's what Jesus had. This is what the high priest would have. And this is the only place found in the Old Testament, no anywhere, about these bells. You can't find anywhere with church bells. And it shall be upon Aaron, Aaron, to minister. And his sound shall be heard when he goeth into the holy place, before the, no rope. And when he cometh out, that he die not. You better have those chains. You better have those bells. You better have the girdle. You better have everything that I just described. You're missing something. You're dead. Are you going to add something to it that is not there like a rope? You're dead. So, man in his tradition of teaching the Bible is wrong. Just as much as Jesus was born on December 25th, that is a wrong tradition. It's a lie. And thou shalt make a plate of pure gold, engraven upon it like a engravings of a signet. Holiness to the Lord. All capital letters. That's one of all capital letters of the Bible. So it's a golden plate. It's a golden a uh, piece of gold and it's engraved in Hebrew and thou shalt put it on a blue lace that it may be upon the mitre that, that, that's the crown of the high priest upon the forefront of the mitre it shall be and it shall be upon Aaron's forehead where they mark the mark of the beast where there is marking of the saints of God, where Goliath got put to sleep. And Aaron may bear the iniquity of the holy things. Jesus Christ bared our iniquities, Isaiah 53. And he's holiness to God, holiness to the Lord, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, Jehovah. So Aaron becomes a type of Jesus Christ. And it shall be upon Aaron's forehead, and Aaron may bear the iniquity of holy things, which the children of Israel shall hallow, holy, in their holy gifts. Oh, here's the one. Holy gifts. The only holy cow there is is when they bring that calf to be offered, the, the cattle to be offered. And it shall be always upon the forehead that they may be accepted before the Lord. And thou shalt embroider the coat. That's needlework. Fine needlework. By the way, that, that holy crown there of Aaron, the Pope has his own little kind of crown that distinguishes him all religions and all people. The big Dagon fish head hat. And I believe on that hat, Oh, I forget how does it go again. But he's the Holy Father stolen out of the Gospel of John. Victor's got something like that. And if you ever add up those, those Roman letters, they come out to be 666. That's where the Pope steal. Embroidery, that's, that's needlework, fine needlework. Coat of fine linen. Well, fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. And thou shalt make the mitre of fine linen. And thou shalt make the girdle of needlework. And for Aaron's sons thou shalt make coats. I mean, now this is his sons. And thou shalt make for their girdle, make for them girdles and bonnets. <laughs> there you go. I thought a bonnet was something that went on a woman's head. No, they go on the sons of Aaron, uh, Nadab, Abihu, Eleazar, and Ithamar. They got bonnets. And thou shalt make for them. For glory and for beauty, their sons. And let me go to, real quick while you stay, let me go to Proverbs 31. I'll read you something about beauty. Talking about a woman. 
Proverbs 31 says, Favor is deceitful, beauty is vain. But a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be prayed. That beauty became vain for Lucifer. It became his self-worship. But if Aaron and his sons, if they were to do that beauty for God, that would be pleasing to God. A glory to God. You can have beauty that praises God, or you can have beauty that will be against God, and no blessing. And thou shalt put them upon Aaron thy brother, and his sons with them. And thou shalt anoint them, and consecrate them, make them declared, and make them sacred for God. And sanctify them, set them apart. That they may minister unto me, God first, in the priest's office. And this is where the Roman Catholic Church, this is where the Mormons steal the title of priest. And thou shalt make them linen breeches. Are you ready for the definition of breeches? Or shall we just read on? They are trousers, hip and over the thighs. Trousers, you, you know what trousers are. To cover their nakedness from the loins even unto the thighs they shall reach. They shall be upon Aaron and upon his sons when they come in. Into the tabernacle. You have to be right. You have to wear what God wants you to wear to be in that service. You have to do what God tells you to do. You have to have everything that God has had you to have or you're in trouble. Do not add to it and do not subtract from it or you're in trouble. And we're talking about the clothes. We're talking about the ministration of Aaron. He better not add to that clothing, and he better not subtract from those clothing. Onto the altar to minister. The altar. That's the brazen altar. To minister the holy place. That they bear not the iniquity and die. You do what you're supposed to do. Nabhab and Abihu are going to do wrong, not by the by the clothing. They're going to do wrong by the by the incense altar of the fire. And poof, they're gone. It shall be a statue, a law forever unto him and his seed after him. This law that's set in Exodus 28 is also going to be the law in the, in the millennium, in the temple before Jesus Christ, in the temples before the Antichrist, and in the eternal life of the new heavens, the new earth, and new Jerusalem. This law is going to be set forth for the Levitical priesthood forever. That same forever is the forever that eternal life that I have. Just later on, the eternal life will be without sin. It will be always proper. Right now, we battle the flesh. 